wants to swing up, let's go now. Uh, shut up, relax. Relax. If you want to go now, let's go. Relax. If you want to go now, let's go. Put chair across your face. Don't, don't disrespect me. No, you can't intimidate me. me. Don't disrespect me. You can't intimidate me. Don't disrespect me. You can't intimidate me. Daniel, don't disrespect me. Who do you think you are? Daniel, don't disrespect me. You can't put this chair across your face. Hold it, hold it, man. Hold it. What, wait. What the f is this kid doing in here? Get the hell out of here before I kick your little ass. <laughs> So, AJ, Daniel Dubois, IBF Championship Gold will be on the line as uh, Alexander Usyk has uh, vacated uh, the IBF Championship Gold. I ain't going to hold y'all, bruh. Um, this is going to be a good fight. And here's the thing. I'll tell you not. I don't think that AJ going to beat Daniel Dubois. I'm saying it right now, man. I'm calling it right now. He's not going to beat Daniel Dubois. Um... What I've seen in the past few fights from Anthony Joshua is improvement, right? But i seen him improve versus no offense to those guys, but the guys he was supposed to be, right? Um, Jermaine Franklin being possibly the toughest opponent that he's seen um, out of all of those guys, right? Um, he knocked out um, Otto Wallin, he knocks out Francis Ngannou, and he knocks out Robert Hernanias, right? Um, those three gentlemen, eh, hit or miss, right? I know people want to say, well, Otto Wileen had a great fight versus Tyson Fury. Yeah, Tyson took him lightly, right? That's really what it boils down to. Tyson took him lightly. He was doing his WWE tour at that time frame. And, uh, yeah, man, he took the guy lightly. He had a situation. But, you know, it is what it is, right? Since then, what has Otto Wileen done? Nothing. He didn't even fight Dempsey McKean. He didn't go after uh, Philip Hergovic. He didn't go after Daniel Dubois. He didn't go after Gerald Big Baby Miller, who was suspended. He didn't go after Joseph Parker. He didn't go after Joe Joyce. He didn't go after nobody. Right? You have that good of a fight versus Tyson Fury. And you return back to fighting old men, 40, 50 year old men. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that, that. Josh was supposed to knock you out. Right? Um, you think about. Uh, uh, the Robert Hellenius cat, he gets knocked out by Deontay Wilder with one punch that didn't even look as strong as Deontay Wilder has been knocking people out. Like, it wasn't one that was on the button. It seemed like he just took a punch. He was scared. He laid down. It's just my opinion. I'm not saying it was a fixed fight. It's not what I'm saying. But it's definitely how it looked when you go back and look at that punch, right? And then you think about Francis Ngannou, MMA guy who had a good fight with Tyson Fury again. A guy Tyson Fury takes lightly. Gets knocked out cold by the likes of Anthony Joshua. If you're thinking about Daniel Dubois, though, right? You're thinking about Daniel Dubois. All of his fights have been top-tier fights, bruh. They all have been, right? Since he's seen Alexander Usyk, which was a top-tier fight, right? Then he steps from that particular fight into the ring with Gerald Big Baby Miller, who was undefeated, 300-plus pounder, who brought the fight. He wins it in the 12th round by stoppage. Right, so he had to go the whole walk with the likes of Gerald Big Baby Miller. Something that Anthony Joshua and uh, Eddie Hearn decided not to do. Now I do know the claims of the, uh, you know, the PED scenario. It is what it is, right? But I mean, come on, the guy's back. Why haven't you tried to get into the ring with him, right? Um, then you get the idea of him stopping Gerald Big Baby Miller and then stepping to the ring with Philip Hergovic, who was another guy who was supposed to see Anthony Joshua. That Joshua decides to go and see Francis Ngannou, the MMA guy, rather than stepping into the ring with Hergovic. And then you get Daniel Dubois stopping him as well. So I think, right, if you really want to look side by side with the, the opponents that they have faced, all of Daniel Dubois' uh, previous opponents has prepared him for a fight with Anthony Joshua. I don't think the same when it comes to Anthony Joshua's previous opponents. Who really set him up to get into this uh, this fight with uh, Daniel Dubois? Name that fighter that he just seen last year. Name that guy. Maybe Jermaine Franklin. Maybe if he would have stepped into the ring with uh, Dillian White. Maybe, right, he would be in a, sh a, a, a good position to, to really step into the ring and beat the likes of Daniel Dubois. And so when I'm seeing him, right, stepping up the way he did, I mean, showing that he has... A bit of a temper, right? Most fighters do, right? Most people do. You ain't got to be a fighter. Most people have a, a temper problem. Um, when I see that, 
I look at Daniel Dubois's face, right? Now you could tell what he was saying was a joke, right? We we all know it was a joke. He really didn't want to fight right then and there, right? That's why he have a bit of a smirk on his face. You can also see Frank Warren having a bit of a smirk on his face. He was like, nah, we'll just wait until you know the fight time and then you get uh all the depots saying the same thing right oh man i, I y'all don't y'all can't fight with me in between y'all right and then you get anthony joshua getting serious for no dang reason right trying to intimidate daniel dubois he's trying to little boy him he's trying to sun him to a certain degree right oh you a little boy you won't make enough money like bro you, you you just you ain't supposed to be side by side with me like bro i'm anthony joshua right and 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 holding on to that facade because he is the man right it ain't, it ain't a if and some maybe's about it joshua is the man but at the end of the day bro we was just questioning your abilities bro a year ago right and the same thing for daniel dubois man you quit right you quit versus oc right but the difference is one guy got back on the horse versus some of the tougher opponents in the game because they was really trying to get him out of there right they was trying to get daniel dubois out Right, so putting him in the ring with Gerald Big Baby Miller was to give Gerald Big Baby Miller the stage and maybe set up an Anthony Joshua Big Baby Miller fight that way, right? But now you get Daniel Dubois stopping that plan, right? He stopped that plan. Then they put him in the ring with Hergovitz, another tough opponent who hadn't lost, who just got out of the ring with Dempsey McKean and destroyed him, right? Who was supposed to see Anthony Joshua for the interim IBF championship goal. You get Joshua not showing up. Dubois steps up, take that fight, and he also destroyed that guy, right? And then you get Anthony Joshua pretty much getting those easy, sort of, you know, walk, let me hold your hand and walk you across the street. So who's really the most intimidating here, AJ? Who's really the most intimidating here? The guy who had Eddie Hearn uh, pack him a, a sack lunch and walk his little baby across the street to school? Or the guy who they turned their back on him, and he, he rose from the concrete uh, in a scenario where he was supposed to be smothered and, 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 and cast away from the sport of boxing. And I'll take Daniel Dubois, right? Then you get the scenario, right, that plays out where uh, AJ says, I'll wrap this uh, effing chair around your face uh, portion. Then you get Daniel Dubois getting serious. You can't intimidate me, bro. Like, you can't intimidate me. And that smile, that little, that little bit of a smile that he had, it turned into uh, seriousness really, really quickly. And you also see AJ stepping up. And as soon as AJ steps up, Daniel Dubois steps up. So at this particular point in time, it's just if you guys were to ask me, I'm saying this being a great fight, 100% um, across the board. I think that Daniel Dubois is going to dub this one. Will he knock out Anthony Joshua is the question, right? Cause I know that's that's pretty difficult. AJ don't have a faulty chain. I mean, he does to a certain degree, right? Uh, especially when you think about the Andrew Weeds fight. But that's a long time ago, right? Even if you were to say, well, you know, Usyk had him in a position where he almost fell too. That was like round 12. That was literally round 12, the, the, fin the final few seconds of that fight, right? So, I don't say AJ got a faulty chin. I do think that AJ going to be able to stand up and have a great fight with the likes of Daniel Dubois. But the question is going to be, how bad do he want it, right? Um, I was just listening to uh, another YouTuber uh, talk about this particular scenario. He said something about um, AJ and flung his money, you know, um, because he had Carl Frost that got to a scenario, right? Which, Carl Frost just hate Anthony Joshua. I don't care about all that. I'm not saying nothing to to uh, really get this part of his character out. I'm just trying to, you know, uh, give the people some content. No, when, when you talk about somebody all the time, and you ain't got nothing but negativity to say about that person, then, bro, you hating on them, bro. You don't like that person. It's okay to say, I don't like Anthony Joshua, bro. Um, Spike Lee used to show up to all Reggie Miller's games in New York City. He used to show up to all of them and help with the guy the entire game, okay? It was okay. Nobody had a problem with it. The ref wasn't telling Spike Lee he got to leave. Uh, Reggie Miller welcomed it, right? It made him play better on those games. So it is what it is if Frost don't like Anthony Joshua. But I'm saying this to say, right, you had AJ counting out all this money, right? Now, I heard a quote from Mike Tyson that says, it's hard to get out of bed when you're waking up in silk sheets. I think the same scenario is going to play out for Anthony Joshua in this fight. He think if he's a shooing to be Daniel Dubois, right? There's no way Daniel Dubois is going to be Anthony Joshua. I beg to differ because I feel like Daniel Dubois looks at Anthony Joshua like a measuring stick to say how good or how bad he actually is in his career, right? Okay, I see he lost, but I was supposed to lose that fight. This is a fight that I can win. This is a fight that I can win. I floored Usyk, 
right? Most could have said, I won that fight with Usy, right? Most people say the watch won that fight, even though, if you ask me, it's a referee's discretion. I don't like the five minutes, but it is what it is because it was a low blow. It's a ref's discretion. Then when you get the replay, we still don't know, right? Some people said, man, it's right on the belt line. He punched there. Some people said it's a low blow, right? So it is what it is, but one guy literally floored Usyk and could be seen right now as undisputed champion. The other guy didn't even get close, right? So I think this is one that Daniel Dubois is going to really go in and bring his A game. I don't think AJ really want to have a slug fest. He could. He could, bro, because he has been dropping bombs lately. But I don't think that this is one that he want to have a slug fest uh, in the center of the ring in front of all of UK. I don't think that's what he's going to do. He's probably going to try to box and pick his shots, maybe, right? But when you look at the Francis and Gondo knockout, right, just watch it. He literally set that up perfectly. When you think about the Robert Hernandez knockout, he also set that up perfectly. So at the end of the day, bro, at the end of the day, I still don't see him winning. I still don't see him winning. I just think that's going to be a scenario that plays out where we're going to get a lot of hate makers, um, a lot of great moments in the fight if it lasts that long, and uh, hopefully it makes it 12, although it just might not, bro. This is a scenario that plays out where if Daniel Dubois gets past this, man, come on with that Usyk fight. Come on with that Usyk rematch because uh, at that particular point in time, uh, we would know who's the winner of uh, Tyson Fury and Otis under Usyk for the next Daniel Dubois fight, so we would already know. So yeah, I would say bring on the likes of uh, Alessandro Ustic or Tyson Fury, depending on the wins, so that dude boys can get his shot at Undisputed. But this is Fist Factory. I'm your host, Neff. I'm signing Now, you guys leave comments in the comment section below. Am I right? Am I wrong? Right? This is just opinionated, right? It's just not a, an opinion to a certain degree of how I see the fight going. It could not go that way at all, right? Somebody could get injured and prematurely before the fight. I'm not going to work for that. But somebody could get um, injured prematurely, and we don't even see the fight. Right, but if you were to ask me, that intimidating thing they tried to do at the uh, the little uh, face to face conversation was just him trying to sign Daniel Dubois. Dubois wasn't serious, he was joking with AJ, and AJ's taking it serious to try to gain a mental edge over Daniel Dubois. And I'm saying it right now, it's not working. If anything, uh, Anthony Joshua has just livened up Daniel Dubois. It got him excited to step into the ring with AJ so he can prove his point. But again, this is Fizz Factory. I'm going to from something. Y'all take it easy, uh, bruh. Peace. Raw Night Champions for members only. Party chat debate for a shot at the Community Board Champion, but remember it's a fight, so don't get knocked out and lose your place in the ranks. Or if you're just here to be a part of the spectacle, that's cool too. Sign up for the first tier to get front row seats to each event and get exclusive content not seen on YouTube. No mods here, but don't get kicked out. See rule books for more details. Oh yeah, ladies and the legends are included if you want to spectate or go for some gold. Raw Night Champions, sign up now. Thank <laughs> you.